الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون وقال الله تعالى في مقام آخر فلم تر كيف ضرب الله مثلا كلمة طيبة كشجرة طيبة أصلها ثابت وفرعها في السماء سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's our Lord, He's our Rabb He's our Khalik, He's our Malik He's our Master, He's our Creator And everything is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Everything is controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Everything is run by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Everything is fed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He created all the men and the jinn for one single purpose and that purpose is that they worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the end result of everybody is either the paradise or the hellfire so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent everybody in this dunya to test. So everybody will be tested. At the end of the day, the people will either pass that test or fail that test. And as a result, they will either go to the paradise or they will either go to the hellfire. And this test is the test of Iman, the belief that we have in our hearts. And belief is something that's, that's of the unseen. If you look into the, the things that we believe in, Amantu Billahi wa Malaikatihi wa Kutubihi wa Rusulihi wal Yawmil Akhiri wal Qadri Khairihi wa Sharrihi in Allah Ta'ala wal al mawt all of the things we don't see right? none of these things we, we do we see we don't see Allah we don't see angels we don't see the destiny can you give them a space so this 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 test is of the belief and the belief is in the unseen and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end he says that if you believe and you believe like have the firm belief then the end result is that I'll give you paradise and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you when you say that you believe and you really mean by what you're saying that Allah will help you as well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, he gives an example in the Quran of the people who believe, the people who say these good words of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. He says that Alam tara kaifa daraballahu mathalan kalimatan tayyibatan kashajaratin tayyibatin. That don't you see that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets forth a parable, an example of the good word, which is this kalima. He says this good word is like a good treat. He says, Asluha thabitun wa faruha fis sama. That the root, th this tree, 
the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving of these good words of the kalima of the iman he says that the the, 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 the root of this tree is formed in the ground and وَفَرْوَحَا فِي السَّمَاءِ and its branches are to the heavens like like rays to the heavens and there the fasir about what tree Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is basically talking about here and the majority of the ulama they they, they agree upon that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the date palm tree and if you look into the date palm tree like it's a very strong tree so like a high tree and we can see that like we can we can even see that with, an, with our own eyes here and the roots are really really firm deep dug deep into the ground if you try to take out a date palm tree it's not very easy you have to possibly get a crane to to take that off the ground right you cannot just shake it so this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the people who say this kalima la ilaha illallah who have this iman in their heart they're like a date palm tree that the roots are firm into the ground and and the branches are very high into the sky right Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and this this tree is like tu'ti ukulaha kulla hinin bi'ithni rabbiha وَيَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْأَمْثَالَ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ that this tree is like that it gives you its fruit in all seasons at all times and there is not even a single any single month that we don't eat dates right you can go and get your the dates any time of the year this is how a, a believer a mu'min a person with iman a person with kalima is like that he he is firm right he is very firm and all the deeds that he does right they are they when they are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he does that with ikhlas with sincerity with with yaqeen with the belief in his heart then the the amal are like its branches that goes to the skies that are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is firm he doesn't he cannot nobody can shake him if really has iman in his heart, if really what he's saying has the effect in his heart, nobody can shake him, just like a dead palm tree. Nobody can shake him. Like and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives another uh, and, and and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here that it brings it gives fruits in all times. He's not like he's a seasoned player. He's not a seasoned player. He's he's playing all the time. He never gets tired. If even if he's on vacation, if he uh, he's at his home, he's with his family, he's with his friends, he's with his with his husband, with his wife, with his mother, with his father, right? Whatever, wherever he is, he's a mu'min, he's a believer. He's strong. He's he's nobody can shake him anytime. Doesn't matter that if if there is 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 a party going on in his company in the place where he works, nobody can shake him and can take him to the things to do. Uh, to do things that are not appropriate he knows that everything is coming from Allah he knows how to behave in every in, in, at every time right if somebody tries to to make him angry he doesn't get angry because he knows that 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 what my responsibility is at that particular time he is strong at every single moment of his life this is a person of Iman right Asluha thabitun, that roots are firm into the ground, and wafaruha fithama, fithama, and the branches are high in the in 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 in, in the in the heavens. So when this person does anything, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accepts his his everything that he does, and all of his amal, his deeds or actions are raised to the heavens to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? And everybody is able to enjoy from his fruits at every single moment. Uh, in his life, this is a mu'min. This is a believer. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala then says, "Wamathalu kalimatin khabisatin kashajaratin khabisatin." And the, the, on the other side, the example, the parable of an evil word, of of uh, of disbelief, is is like that of an evil tree. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that it is torn up by the root from the surface of the earth, and it has no stability. A person who has weak, who does not have iman, or maybe the people of the hypocrites, where iman is shaky, 
right? They only get believe because of certain reasons. And any time that the things are not going favorable to them, then they just lose their iman. They can sell their iman for like ten bucks, maybe. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that these people are like they're so weak. I mean, they can be uprooted any time anything happens. They're gone. Their iman that they are willing to sacrifice their iman at 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 very small cost. So our job is to make that iman firm in our heart. We need to make sure that it should the the roots are firm into the ground. It should be like a dead palm tree. And we should do everything in our life with with so much sincerity that all the actions that we do should be raised to the skies with with acceptance. But when we say, I mean, everybody can claim, right, that we believe. Everybody can say that we say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad rasulullah and we mean by that. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says another thing, and which is a little bit scary. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif la meem, ahasib al-nas an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. That do people think that they will be left alone by saying that we believe. People say that we believe, we, we say this kalima la ilaha illallah, and if, we, if they really mean it, then he says that two people think that they will be left alone, wa hum la yuftanun, and they will not be tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ I've tested peop uh, people before, before them. فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ I've tested people before them, so that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that, so that he will certainly know those who are true in their faith and those who are false. So if people claim that they believe in Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then everybody will be tested. Everybody will be tested. And this word fitna in Arabic, it means, it's, it, it actually means to, to test gold, the purity of gold. So, so the way that the gold is tested is that it's put into the fire. And when it's put into the fire, all the impurities get separated from the pure, the, the purity of the gold. That's how the gold is tested, and this is in Arabic, and actually, that's what what's called fitna. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is using the same word. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "You, you all claim that you believe in Allah. You say La ilaha illallah. Very good. But now the second thing comes. He said, Hasib al nas an yutraku an yaqulu amanna, wa hum la yuftanun." Do you say that, that, that you believe and you will not be tested? He said, I have tested everybody before you. He said, I have tested every single person who have, who have said that he has believed. I have tested everybody and I will test you as well. To, to see why. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see that who is, who is right, who is true in saying what he is saying with his tongue. And so that he will see that who is false. If you look into the other places in the Quran, everybody, like for example, if you look into the seerah of the Prophet wasallam, and we can see that the, the tests that he has gone through, it's ajeeb, right? Like so much, so he's the Prophet of Allah, the best of creation. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation. And look into his early life in Makkah. Ajeeb. Everybody, everywhere he's going, like he's, he's being rejected. Everybody reject him. His own uncles, his own family. People reject him, rejecting him. And so much so that he, he got so disheartened with, from his own family that he thought that maybe I'll go to another town. And he went to Taif. And that was the that was the lowest maqam, lowest uh, situation in his life, and he himself says that. And so much so that people 
the, 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 the people of Taif, they asked the small children to run after him and they were throwing stones at him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was bleeding and he was trying to hold his blood so that it doesn't fall on the ground. Because he said if the, if the blood of the Nabi, of a, of a messenger, if it falls on the ground, I said, I don't know what's going to happen on, to, to these people. And he went and he rested at one place. And he made a beautiful dua at that place. He said, Oh Allah, I don't really care what these people are doing to me as far as you are pleased with me. But if it's all, this all is coming because you are displeased with me, then I ask you for forgiveness, oh Allah. Because I cannot take that, that you are angry with me. This is the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Sahaba were tested. And the Sahaba were tested, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in the Quran the way the Sahaba were tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Hunali kaptali al mu'minuna wa zulzilu zilzal and shadida that that in that situation the believers were tried. Right? And they were shaken by a tremendous shaking. When Allah is saying that they were shaken with a tremendous shaking, we can only think of that what kind of dust these must have been. Think of Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu anh. His parents, like the first martyrs in, in our deen, they were like the parents were martyred right in front of his eyes. Just think about what kind of what kind of feeling he must have ha had in his in his heart. We, we read all of these stories, but we cannot really feel that in in, in our hearts. Just think about Bilal radiallahu and he was put on the on <laughs> on the coals on the burning sand. And his back, the, the skin was melting because of the heat. And that was uh, extinguishing the, the fire. Just think about it. We can read all of that. But, but I mean, we, we can't even uh, take a, 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 if somebody breaks, uh, if, 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 say, for example, we put our hand into a fire for like one second. Or some an insect uh, comes and bites us, like for one second. You cannot even take that. Just think about what situation he must have been, uh, must have gone through. And still he's saying, "Ahad, ahad, ahad." Allah is one. I cannot, I cannot just just say what what you you want me to say. I will only say that Allah is one. That's what the iman was in their hearts. Nobody can shake their iman. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "I tested them with a tremendous shaking." Allah is, is saying that in His holy book. Even before that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He says, Am hasibtum an tadkhulul jannata That you think that you will enter into the jannah, into the paradise. وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Right? Without the trials at came, as came to those who passed away before you. Do you think that you will all enter into the paradise? We are all like say la ilaha illallah with our tongue finished, you know, everybody will enter Jannah. He said, Do you think that you will you 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 think that you will enter paradise and you will not be tested as I tested the people before you? He said that he says that um Masathumul Basa Uwadrau that I they, they encountered sufferings and adversity وَزُلْزِلُوا and they were shaken حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ SubhanAllah He said they were so much shaken that even the messenger at that time and the people who were among the messengers they even said that where is the help of Allah? Just again imagine the, the, the amount, that the limit that they must have been tested to they said, Mata Nasrullah, where is the help of Allah? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala inna nasrallahi qareeb. Don't worry, that the, the, the victory of Allah is very near to you. But just think about their situations, and these were the people, and we are also a few people, who also say, La ilaha illallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Am ahasib an nas an yutraku, an yaqulu amanna, wa hum la yuftanoon. That do people say think that they will be left when they say that we believe and they will not be tested? Everybody's test is different. But that's for sure that if all people say that they believe in Allah, they say La ilaha illallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see that who is who is 
And that test can come in different shapes or form. Somebody's test is small, somebody's test is big. And we all, all ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He doesn't put it into, into any test because we are, our Iman is so weak and we are so distanced from the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? We are so much distanced from the light, the source of light. And we don't have that light that all those people had who were among the messengers and who were near the times of the messengers. We all say, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to keep us away from any of the trial and any of the fitness. But the thing is that everybody will be tested to some extent for sure. And that test can be as simple, as small as maybe husband and wife talking to each other. The way they talk to each other. Sometimes shaitan will come and maybe try to... to to um, put some evil thoughts in any of those and, and provoke somebody so that how is going or she is going to talk to the other people or other person, his, his or her spouse. That can be as small as this. And now this is the test that how are you going to behave in that manner, in that situation. Are you really a believer? Do you say, La ilaha illallah, you, have, you say, Muhammad Rasulullah, you have the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in front of you. Are you going to behave in the, in the, in the manner that the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba behave? Or are you going to have your own feelings and your own nafs? And this test, be, test can be as simple as, as, as your boss inviting you to, uh, to, an, to, an, to uh, a meeting that's going to be at the bar. Right? And you think that, you know, if I don't go to that meeting, I'm going to be fired or he's not going to promote me anymore. Right? Or he's not going to have any goodwill in his heart for me. Where is the Iman? Where, where, where did La ilaha illallah go? <laughs> is Allah giving the risk or that person is giving the risk? When people sell their Iman for, for something that, that's so cheap, Subhanallah. Yes, we have to work honestly and we should, and in fact Muslims should work more than anybody else in, in, in the community. But the thing is when it comes down to principles of our faith, where is the iman? It can be as simple as maybe parents talking to their, their children and when children don't like what they're saying and they're adults, Right, and they are shouting back at their parents, where is the Iman? Quran is filled with, with, with the respect of the parents. When it comes down to somebody saying something that you don't like, right, and then you start hating him or start having jealousy in your heart because of what he or she said, and you start planning and plotting against that person. There is the Iman. When you backbite other people, when you call other people names, when you have jealousy, hatred, animosity, arrogance, where is the Iman? These are all tests. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he says in the, in the Quran, He says, وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْدُكُمْ لِبَعْدٍ fitna." That I'll make a few people fitna, a test for the other people. He says that. <laughs> right? He says that I have made some of you a fitna, a trial for others. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks a question. He says, أَتَصْبِرُونَ Will you be patient? This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demands from us. He says that all of what's happening around you is the test of your iman. So that I can see that who was true in saying what he was saying with his tongue. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Did he really mean that? 
every single thing that's happening around us or with us is to test our claim of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Every single thing. We feel that, you know, things are just hap happening haphazardly. It doesn't have any meaning. No, every single thing has a meaning. People sitting here have a, has a meaning. Every single thing has a meaning. Everything happens with the will of Allah. Everything happens with the knowledge of Allah. Everything does thing with the with with the permission of Allah. When people talk to each other, the words that they say to each other, that Allah SWT knows what's going to happen. And everything is a test. Every single thing is a test, is a fitna, is a trial to test our iman. If we say La ilaha illallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even, even the good things are fitna. They are also a test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test like, how do you behave when you get some good news? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullu nafsin that every every person will taste death. And I will I'll test you with, with bad and with good. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, uh, sorry, that, uh, that, uh, yeah, and وَنَبْلُوَكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ fitna, And I'll test you with evil and by good as by the way of trial. وَإِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ And to all of you are going to come back to me. All of what's happening around you is a test so that I want to test you how do you behave. Even if it's a good thing or it's a bad thing, you got a promotion, right? Do you go and like uh, you shake your alcohol bottles and 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 sprinkle and splash it onto other people, or you go into the sajda and say Alhamdulillah, ya Allah, thank you very much. Everything is a test. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at another place, He says that there are some people who just worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just sitting at the verge of the circle. And as soon as the fitna, the trial comes to them, that's like it. They're, they're being tested with something that's that they don't like. This is وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حَرْفَ And there are among some pe people, there are people who serve Allah, who worship Allah as it were on their on the verge. فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ that, that if the good befalls of them, they are very well content. Right? And when a trial comes to them, they turn on their faces. And this is dunya wal akhirah. They lose both the words. They didn't even get anything because it, will a it was a trial. And because they did not pass that test, they are not going to get anything in the hereafter as well. ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ it says that, like, this is an open, open loss. So this is all what, what we are going through, right? All of us are going through some kind of a test. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after that, أَمْ حَسِبَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ أَنْ يَسْبِقُونَ سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ that those who practice evil think that they will run away from us? Do they think that they can go somewhere else? They, they are not going to come back to me? He says, Sa yahkumun. What an evil judgment that they are making. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man kana yarju liqa Allah. That you say that you believe, then all of you should hope in the meeting of Allah. Right? So all of you who have hopes in the meeting of Allah, فَإِنَّ أَجَرَ اللَّهِ لَآت It says that meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very surely coming. It's surely coming very soon. Everybody of us was going to die. Everybody is going, uh, all of us are going to be raised up and we are all going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's وَهُوَ الصَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمِ He knows what you do. All 
all the tests that all of you are going through. He knows that what what is the result. You don't have to really like answer the questions in 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 a particular format. And there is an examiner who's going to test and and mark. You know, you know, got you got forty out of hundred. Allah subhanahu wa taala doesn't need that. Well, he's a sami, he's al alim. He listens to everybody. He has the the the, the ultimate knowledge. He knows everything. As soon as we do something, the result is right there and then. Although, just to to show people, he is preparing a book as well, so that he can show those people that book to the people on the day of judgment. Look, this is what you actually did. You cannot deny that, right? But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is in no need of that book in any way, right? And then he says, "O man jahada fa inna ma yujahidu li nafsi." And yes, this test that you are all going through, it is difficult, it's a struggle. But that's... وَمَنْ جَاهَدَ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِهِ But that struggle is for your own self. Right? It's not for Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are saying you that, that, you, that you believe in Allah, so He is putting you in some kind of a test and you are struggling. But that's for your own benefit. Do struggle. And inshallah ta'ala, the result, the reward is going to be great. Allah is in no need of that. If Allah wants, what's Allah going to get out of all of the tests that we are going through? But the thing is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving a, it's like patting on our back kind of. He's saying, don't worry. It's a little struggle. Yes, everything is a struggle. Even talking to your spouses is a struggle sometimes. But don't worry. To be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I've made some people test for other people, yes, it's going to hurt you sometimes, be patient. This struggle is going to benefit you, my friend. Inna Allah ghaniyun alil alameen. Inna Allah la ghaniyun alil alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in no need of that. He is free of all of His creation. Then He says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَنُكَفِّرَنَّ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَحْسَنَ الَّذِي كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Those who believe and do good deeds, from them we will, we will remove the evil that's in them. So the people who, when they will be tested, and they will be, uh, it will be proven that these people really believe then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that once you go through that struggle, then I'm going to help you out. I will remove all the impurities that are in your heart. All the things that we are struggling uh, with to purify our heart, to walk on this path to Allah. This is just if you pass all the tests that are around you, I'm going to help you out. And I'm going to remove all the evil from you. And then he says that, and I will reward them according to the best of their deeds. So all of the things that we do, all the phases that we go to in, 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 through in our lives, all the situations that we handle in our daily lives, all of that is a test, it's a struggle. right? And our job is that how can we deal with that situation? How can we, we, we perform in that situation? That's what our job is. And that should be according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said told us in his holy book and what our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us through his blessed seerah, through his blessed character. Right? And we should have that connection with Allah any time, any time that anybody feels that the situation that he is in or she is in is not very pleasing to to, 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 to him or her. Right? What they should do is they should connect back to Allah right away. They should always connect to Allah, but in that particular situation, that's a, the, especially they should have a special connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then ask Allah for help. Ask Allah for help in that situation. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see. Right? How do, you, how do you behave? How do you perform? And if somebody gets into a situation that's pleasing to that person, then do shukr to Allah. Right away. Say, Allah, thank you. 
for all the goods that you have given me. Oh Allah, Allah, may inni a'uzu bika min zawali ni'matik. Oh Allah, I ask you that 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 you 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 don't take all of these ni'mas, all of these blessings away from me, because I am in need of that. This is how our how our response should be in every situation, good or bad. And this is all going to end in any way. All the goods and all the bads are all ending. And a day will come, then it will be our turn. The angel of death is going to come. Let's go. Right? And all of the things that if it was the poorest of people who was like living in rags, or the richest of people who never even had a headache, headache in, his, in, in his lifetime, right? All of these are going to go back to Allah. And it doesn't matter that he was, he was, if he was rich or he was poor. Right? All that matters is how he lived his life. If he was in blessings, did he do shukr to Allah? If he was in uh, in pain, then did was he patient enough? And did he make his connection to Allah and always ask for help? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if, you, if, if people are in pain or if they are going through struggle and if they connect back themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah doesn't leave them alone. All of these things are temporary. Allah does give them sukoon, the patient, the 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 peace of heart it does he does but the thing is sometimes we become impatient sometimes we become we do things that are not liked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that period is extended for, for for some reason and that's also for our own benefit so our response should be connect to Allah right away ask Allah for help ask Allah Allah please don't test me anymore because I'm not worthy of it I, I cannot take it I'm very weak Oh Allah, please take me out of this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ma'al usri yusran, inna ma'al usri yusran. He said it twice, same ayah, twice, repeated, right, one after another. He says, with every difficulty there is an ease. With every difficulty there is an ease. And what ulama, some ulama say that with every difficulty, what it means is that with every, with one difficulty, there are, there are two eases. The ease that you get after difficulty is double of, of, of the difficulty that you have gone through. So this is what our life is all about. This life is about our connection with Allah Ta'ala. This, this life is about how do we behave in every single situation in our life. How do we get up in the morning? How do we go to the bathrooms? How do we wear our clothes? How do we go out? How do we perform? live our life, how do we work, how do we behave, how do we interact with people, how do we worship Allah, what do we do with our times, how do we talk, how do we walk, how do we eat, how do we drink, how do we deal with all the situations, the tests, the trials that come along. This is all what life is about. Everybody is known tests, but all are going to finish in any way. And the thing is that every single person, if he passes his or her test, then inshallah we have all have hopes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that's if that's a difficult situation that's going to go in any way and inshallah the ease will come and that ease will be forever that ease will be for in this dunya and that ease will be in the hereafter as well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he said that يُثَبِّطُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will establish in strength those who believe with the word that stands firm in this word and of al-akhirah and in the hereafter he will help if you if you if you remain strong right in that in that in that situation then he says that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them firm in this dunya after that and also in the akhirah and what the ulama say for this this particular verse that this akhirah means the qabr the grave the, 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 the two angels will come, the Munkar and Nakir, and they'll ask the three simple basic questions. That who is, who is your Rabb? Who is your Lord? Who is, uh, what's your Deen? What's your religion? And who is the Messenger? Simple questions that we spoke last time. Very difficult answers. But then Allah will help us if we remain firm on this, on the, on the Kalima with our words and with our actions, with the certainty in our heart and with our connection with Allah, then Allah will help us in the grave in answering those questions.